Welcome to the new Wingnut and Rockhead podcast show, where we're going to take a look at what we do here at Fighting Colors. And that includes discussing custom projects, uh, progress reports, nose art on warbird restorations, and anything uh, nose art related, including general aviation or whatever uh, questions you might have. Uh, so please send in. Uh, and ask some questions about what we're doing here. Um, I don't care how silly they are. I mean, we'll try to answer in as many and as accurate as, as we can, uh, or as goofy as you can, like how long my hair is and why do I still have it? <laughs> anyway, so uh, without further ado, you guys are probably wondering who Rockhead is. So uh, I'm gonna bring in uh, my co-host who will be with me during um, every episode of the show um, that, uh, most likely, unless uh, unforeseeable uh, reasons that uh, may come up, but uh, you never know. Um, so, anyway, the, let me explain to you why we call this Wingnut and Rockhead before before we bring this in. Um, Wingnut, I'm, I'm everything about aviation, have been for the last 25 years or so. Um, anybody that loves aviation is a big fan of aviation. Um, you know, the, the term wingnut, I guess, would apply to that. So being what I do, I thought, let me put that moniker um, to this, you know, my persona in this show. And uh, my co-host, um, uh, being a big rock fan, um, a big rock fan and, and fan of music, hard rock, and everything metal as well, for that matter, um, we, we thought that the name Rockhead would be uh, appropriate. So uh, let's, let's bring her in. Come on in. This is Hi. Rockhead. <laughs> this is Dawn. Um, as you may have already been familiar with uh, some of my postings on my personal page on Facebook, um, she's been with, with me for the last uh, couple of years. She's relatively new to the aviation scene, and she's learning. Um, her first taste of uh, aviation was at, at Oshkosh 2019, right? So. Mm -hmm. Tell the audience a little bit what you thought about it. What do you think about aviation? What do you think about me? Blah, 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 anything. And, and you know, your first taste of number one, Oshkosh. I mean, that's the biggest show on the planet when it pertains to aviation. So might as well start at the top and get you, push you right in off the, off the deep end. So what do you think? Yeah, that was a big first taste. That was, that was crazy. That was like a smorgasbord. That was, um, you told me that it was like, the Woodstock of planes, but I think it it went even beyond that. Um, there's just so much to do. We didn't see it all the whole week that we were there. We were there from before it opened up to after it closed up. Well, because we were working, yeah. we were setting yeah. up, working, so we were limited to what we're, what we could do until after five o'clock when vendors shut down, and then we can go out and venture out for the night shows and night parties and, and whatnot. But um, but yeah, when she said uh, the Woodstock of planes, it's Woodstock of aviation, where anybody, for the love of aviation in any type of form, um, from anywhere ballooning to uh, kit planes, uh, to warbirds, and to corporate aviation, it's a uh, trade show um, also, uh, a corporate trade show um, that has vendors that makes nuts and bolts, rivets, tools, all the way to full planes that are represented there, and like Boeing will roll out their their newest, greatest commercial aircraft, uh, debut that there, and um, along with with the trade show, there's the air show aspect. You know, at any given time, there's always something flying in the air. Um, from let's say you know 6:15, I think is when the first gaggle of P-51s will go up and do a photo op. Where the, you know that's our basically our, a wake up call. That's the first uh, you know uh, time you wake up to hear you know four Merlin engines screaming overhead, and and you know it's time to get up. And the reason why we know this is because you know there's also a campground. You can go there, uh, rent a small space for a minimal amount, and set up pitch a tent, or you know bring an RV there. Um, and you're staying there for the week or however long you want to stay. But nonetheless. Um, 
the air show is from like seven o'clock to twelve midnight, or, or, or however long you want to stay up, uh, because there's always you know little parties. Campground has these little parties. There's a the swamp, swamp party, party. Yeah, that was the with best. <laughs> Warbird swamp party. Yeah, that that can get out of out of out of control at times, but that's always a nice little feature when they have that there, where a lot of the Warbird pilots gather. Uh, in that little area. Uh, we had our own little parties too, like with the string we lights. We did, we did. We had our own little campground there in our uh, 40 by 40 foot footprint uh, where we set up. And um, But anyway, if you haven't been to Oshkosh, you have to go experience. The shopping is great too. Yes, and, and there's it's just the camaraderie. The people are so friendly. Um, it, it's, it's just it's like a family, literally. Uh, and the folks that have been there and have been there many times know exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, but it was her first uh, sort of getting her foot wet into the field of aviation uh, and what it is that I do here. So it just seemed natural to bring her on uh, for this particular podcast show as a rockhead and to have a sidekick as well, too, <laughs> and at least a good looking one, too. <laughs> anyway, um, so anyway, let, let's delve into what we're all about and what we're going to do here. So. I run Fighting Colors. I started this some 25 years ago. Um, everyone asked me, how did you get into this? What, why did you get into this? I said, well, the, the short answer is I hated my day job. You know, that's what I tell most people. There is a lengthier explanation why, but um, we don't have the time for it. Maybe we'll talk about this in another question when somebody asks or so we can get into it a little bit more deeper. But I just wanted to run down what the format of the show is going to be like so you know what to expect when you, when you tune in. Oh, by the way, the show is going to be on once a week, every Sunday at 1 o'clock. It's tentative. We're going to try to hold to that as best as we could. You know, I know there's things going on on weekends. We go out on events. And instances like that will probably just, you know, just do a repeat or maybe you know, slate it for another day or something like that but we'll tell you on Facebook you know what to expect we're gonna have special guests we will bring in people via zoom or even people that will stop by here in person set up a third chair and um, and um, we'll, you know we'll just interact that way too we're in my showroom by the way uh, there's two aspects to the to the shop and at some point in the future we'll give you a, a tour of what the shop looks like and what the showroom looks like um, so, you, so you get a sort of feel for, you know, what our work environment is like here. So we'll do that in a future episode. Um, we're going to also talk about custom projects, uh, which there are plenty of. Um, we're always getting new custom projects in. Uh, fun facts. Fun facts. Yeah, if you guys have any uh, facts that you want to or questions regarding things. And, and, you know, our projects also has, you know, fun facts to meaning you know why we're doing this uh the behind the scenes and the stories behind what we're doing yeah world war ii stories that as well when we learn them we'll just share them with you based on the projects that we're working on uh also we have uh we're excited that we have a new line of a2 uh flight jackets uh leather jackets that we've been doing a lot of uh artwork on we didn't used to do a lot of A2 jackets, but um, a lot of our customers say, hey, do you do jackets? And we're like, no, we don't really advertise, but you know, if you want us to do one, uh, we'll certainly uh, uh, make one up for you. So we were getting them from you know, other dealers and whatnot, and we thought, hey, why not have a, you know, our own line? And uh, one of our, I guess, admirers had, had, had stepped up to the plate and, and you know, manufactures uh, these A2 jackets and say, hey, we can, we can do this for you. So, um, so we engaged. So we created a small fighting color, colors label, which is you know, attached and embroidered in the back of the jacket. Uh, and we just started doing this. So we have a rack full of our new line of jackets. So if you're interested in having us do an A2 jacket, we can certainly accommodate you that way with any kind of artwork you would like to have done. So um, having said that, we also do some uh, Warbird restorations, as you well know and have seen some of my work you know, at air shows. Um, let's see, a couple of past ones that are you know, most notable are you know, Diamond Lil, uh, most recently a B-25 called Show Me for the CAF. Um, Missouri Wing, um, Doris Dragon May. Dragon Lady? Well, that's not a CAF, that's a oh, private. Okay. That was a okay. twin bonanza. 
Um, but in any case, yeah, that was another recent piece that I did that you might have seen on, on uh, posted on Facebook how we how we did all that. Um, it, it's just numerous airplanes. I mean, just a couple of dozen of uh, warbirds that we've done. Uh, it will probably highlight some of those. Um, in, in as far as restorations this year, we're looking at a C-47 that we're working with uh, another CAF uh, entity that um, is looking to have something done. Uh, possibly a B-25 this summer. I'm not sure um, if this guy is going to commit to it yet. It, there's, he's in the process of purchasing one, so see how that plays out. And also a Corsair that uh, one of my customers uh, and clients and past uh, client that I've done other Warbirds for has uh, purchased a, a Corsair. I was thinking about painting one in a very famous uh, ace that's not been represented yet in the Warbird community. So we're thinking about doing that. He's right now wants to fly it for a while before it goes down for maintenance and, and you know, because there's going to be some repainting of the base coat in order to put this scheme on there. So we're hoping that that plays out because that'll be very exciting as well. So and there's a couple of other things that are pending that, you know, not really worthy of, of talking about yet. So until that happens, um, I'll let you know. But um, what else? Oh, questions. Just just bring in those questions. You can bring them in at, uh, at Facebook. We have a new Facebook page called Wingnut and Rockhead Show. So we quietly kind of put that out there. We didn't officially launch it yet but after viewing this um you have seen you you, you can certainly visit and, and you'll know that it's there now and you can start chiming in you'll see that it's brand new and there's not a whole lot of posts or comments on there yet uh, but there will be a link to this uh show there as well uh, my gary velasco facebook page and then the fighting colors collection shop fan page so there's there's quite a few pages and of course youtube of course so where this is actually going to be stemming from and everything else will come from that particular link. So that's pretty much it right now. Do you have anything you want to add to this? I mean, not no, that I can not think yet. of. No. Well, we, we need to get people engaged. So so we need a fun fact. <laughs> yeah, we, well, a fun fact. I don't know what fun fact. You know the fun facts. Yeah, but we need a topic. No, we needed, we just needed just, what was that one story that you were talking about? Um, Oh, it was about one of those. Was it Donnie Boy? It was a P-47. I don't know this name. I mean, we have, by the way, we have panels all around Yeah, there's here panels the all over the place. So and each one has a little story and, and so forth. And the showroom is set up like a lounge. I mean, you can't see it all yet, but you may have seen it. I remember there pictures. was a fun story at, um, at Oshkosh. One of the panels that you brought there, somebody came in. It was a young kid. He brought a book. And it was about the history from the plane that that panel. You're talking about Old Crow? Yes, I think the that guy is that it. The bought the bottle yeah, of whiskey. Yeah, that's Crow? yes, okay. that's the one. If you're talking about Old Crow, the uh, uh, the Triple A's Bud Anderson, who's still with us? I believe he's turned a hundred now, or ninety nine, or something 99, like that. I think. And um, and as a matter of fact, I just worked on another 357 fighter group panel, and I talked to um, the son. Um, oh my God, his name escapes me. Um, Junior, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm sure you're probably seeing this, and I just, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll chime in. I apologize for not remembering your first name right now. There's just a lot of things going on in my head, and it's just scrambled. In any case, uh, he helped us out with uh, coming up with some of the names on the side of this particular uh, Peterson's airplane, which was called um, Nookie Bookie. No, not Nookie Bookie. Ah, what's the one I did? Just did. Anyway. Pictures on it probably below. <laughs> and it's it's Richard Peterson's P fifty one, and nobody knew what the names were, uh, including decal sheets and and even the restored airplane that's out there now doesn't have the names on there. So I was determined to come up and try to find the names. I'm looking through magnifying glasses at all the pictures and. So I figured, These let me, are the ones you just came up with a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, For a customer that, stuff, wanted, yeah. uh, that wanted uh, yeah. one of these custom uh, pieces. So, yeah. uh, so I contacted uh, Anderson Jr. And he, um, he said, well, my dad's got all that stuff because uh, Merle Olmsted, who passed away several years ago, was the group historian who had a lot of those photographs and was the author of a couple books on the 357th Fighter Group. So I thought... 
perchance maybe he might have something and sure enough he did was able to scan the photographs in high res and I could still better read the photographs and we knew sort of the names we didn't know quite the spelling so just a little bit of detective work and we figured out the names uh, and I applied it to this panel so now um, we know what that is so if you're watching whoever restored that airplane you want to put the names on there I could certainly accommodate and put that on there or you guys can do it yourself but uh, the names are there so um, so now that uh, sets the record straight so to speak all right so I guess we'll just you know wrap this up for now and um, just wanted to make an introduction and uh, so you guys could put a face to who we are what we're going to do and try to make this as fun as possible so again send in your questions anything you might have pertaining to nose art uh, if we could figure them out and help you out with a you know uh, a question that you've always wanted to know about nose art or a specific airplane I don't I don't you know I don't know everything you know I'm not an encyclopedia but he can find it technical. out Right. So, I mean, if I could find things out post-show and maybe bring it back another another time, the following time, that's fine. But if I could, if I know the answer right away, then I'll go certainly. I mean, I'm not going to quote serial numbers, you know, right off the bat because I don't have that information at the tip of my fingers. So, but we'll figure it out. And um, and his library of planes is huge. The pictures that he's got. So he oh, knows art. Yeah. He usually has, um, you know, a picture of just about everything yeah. well yeah i mean there's only a handful of people in the country that keep sort of a body of nose art photographs i have over eight thousand original nose art photographs and then there's all the digital you know copies and so mm -hmm. forth like that that you know adds to that but uh i don't publish them um if i do there you know i started within my one of my my first book on nose art called fighting colors mm -hmm. So, but I plan to do subsequent books as well pertaining to nose art so I could release all this uh, wonderful stuff that's never been seen before. So, um, in any case, if you have anything related to nose art, I mean, if I could find it out, I'll certainly help you out. If I don't, you know, I mean, so be it. But I try to exhaust as much um, resources as I could to, you know, whenever I have to research something for a project that I'm working on. So, um, and, you know, time is money, typically. So, I mean, hopefully I should be able to answer whatever you might have. So, thanks for watching. Um, we try to keep these things about 30 minutes to 40 minutes, give or take, on the topic, subject matter, or whatever. Uh, shouldn't go much further than that because you guys then will get boring and walk off and, you know, go have a drink or something like that, too. So, again, we're going to make this fun. Um, right now, this is, this is our first tape. We're not doing any editing right now. Um, we're gonna. I think the first two shows will probably be like this. We're trying to get used to some new equipment that we have coming in. Uh, we're gonna. I mean, this is all new, so I've never done this before. So I don't know really what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna bring in, you know, a producer at some point so we can go live uh, and answer questions live on YouTube because that's gonna require, you know, somebody doing some minor mixing and, and, and looking at the monitor and, and, you know, giving me cues on who's got questions. I don't know. You know, we're just kind of winging it. So, um, but wing again, nut. <laughs> yeah, wing up. So <laughs> thanks for tuning in and send in your questions. And we hope to see you once again next week. So thanks for watching Wingnut and Rockhead. Mm -hmm.